We are focusing on one of the least used cards today, Havoc. Havoc reads, after each turn, you lose one max energy and this gains plus four power. What that means is, the turn you play Havoc, that is how much energy you will have for the rest of the game. So if you play him on turn three, you will have three energy for the rest of the game. If you play him on turn four, you will have four. So how do we win with only three and or four energy for the rest of the game? We lean on big cards that can be discounted. That includes Mockingbird, Sasquatch, and Scar. Squirrel Girl helps decrease the cost of Mockingbird, and Mysterio does the same thing along with helping to discount Sasquatch on the following turn. Nico just provides some good utility with her different spells. Wasp is a zero cost card that can help cheapen your Sasquatch if you play her on the turn prior or to just position one extra power in a place you might need it. Goose is pretty important in a deck like this. He of course limits where your opponent can play their big power cards, but you can still sneak into the Goose lane with Sasquatch, Scar, or Mockingbird, or Goose can be used to protect your Havoc lane from Shang-Chi. We have Psylocke who, when you play Havoc on turn three, sometimes you just need four energy, so by playing her down, you can get four energy on the following turn and then play out your discounted big power cards because they cost four. We have White Widow, who is just a very good two cost card, which depending on when you play her in the game, can turn into a two five or just junk up your opponent's side of the board. And to round out the deck, we have Jeff. He's just good utility where you can slide him to whatever lane you need three more power in. This deck is probably also on the harder end to pilot because there you really have to manage smartly your energy. So I made plenty of mistakes while testing. Let's hope I avoid them while I'm recording. But this deck is on the harder end to pilot. Okay, first up we have Amaru. We have Scar and Mockingbird and Wasp. Okay. Psylocke. They have a normal deck. Plintar can discount the Mockingbird. So I think I will play Squirrel Girl middle. That way the actual Squirrel Girl turns into a symbiote, which further discounts Mockingbird. We might be going up against Phoenix Force. My baby. So we will play White Widow middle, so to turn their destroy into a 50-50. And I won't snap on the 50-50 if they play Phoenix Force and it brings back the White Widow, then maybe I will. Play the real Mysterio left. Do I get down Psylocke? If I play the real Mysterio left, that's one, two, three, four. So my Mockingbird is down to two. Uh, Psylocke and Wasp, just in case I draw into Sasquatch. Which you really shouldn't play into that, what you're going to draw into. Because it's a one in five chance, 20%. So it's an 80% chance not to happen, so I really shouldn't play for the 80%. Flintar, though, keeps my board space clear, so that's why I'm kind of going this way. Wow, they played it in a danger. Oh, they had to. They had to. Because nowhere in Clintar would change it. So if they fill a location, the Widow's Kiss does get bumped up to five or something snap. Uh, snap because their Phoenix Force brought back nonsense now is this my version of the Phoenix Force deck is the question uh, let's go with Mockingbird here because they might have Sean is why I'm asking and Nico here because my next card I could play in Danger Room and it wouldn't be destroyed with Nico. But we will see. 
Okay, so our Mockingbird is safe. They wanted... They wanted to try their luck on the destroy. So they still might go double destroy, but the Nimrod is only six. So I think I just stack my power. Mysterio is four. So if I play Scar here, that brings me up to 19. I don't think that's winnable. Let's let's hope Nico doesn't uh, mess me up, and we'll play a little bit for the danger room too. See what they have. Okay, so they're abandoning. Oh, what is going to happen here? Oh, you are mine. Oh, Nico. No! Nico did not mess me up. She messed the opponent up, and it might have been my version with the with the Ghost Spider play. Victory. Man, Nico coming through. I talked about her utility, and it worked to our benefit. I will take the the randomness here because they they may have beaten us. I'm pretty sure they beat us without this play. So this was this was fantastic, and I will I will take the lucky four. Okay, next up we have Pano and Sano. Shadowlands. We have our token cards, our Squirrel Girl and Mysterio, but we don't have the two cards that work with them. Mockingbird and Sasquatch. So I'm against playing... There's our Mockingbird. I will play Squirrel Girl first. Uh, Squirrel Girl Middle? So, this is a discounting Mockingbird question, and I don't have time to think it through. Because when Squirrel Girl changes, they're getting four of my car. Oh no, it's the... This is the new Loki. Um, okay, where they get my deck. Ew, Bar Sinister. Ugh. That's awful for Mysterio. I mean, I do I just play Jeff? Ugh, I'm running out of board space. <laughs> Jeff here, and then Wasp? One, two, three. Ugh, I'm running out of board space. Wow, okay. They uh, really wanted... The Hulks, can I, can I get there? What is, no, what is copycat? Oh, she, did she not get any abilities? Hmm. Okay, so I have a free Mockingbird. Do I try to clog them? Do I try to clog them in Bar Sinister? Ugh, what a what a nasty game. I'm not sure what to do. Do I abandon middle? And then play a white widow? Two white widows? Okay, doing that left probably would have been the better play. Oh, turning a Sasquatch into a demon. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. This is unwinnable. I think this is unwinnable. Three cards in hand. It's weird why they haven't snapped me. I have a free Mockingbird, but I only have one spot to play. Okay, they're gonna fill up. Oh wow, look at that. Guess. Uh, if I draw into Scar, I win. Do I win anyway? By one point? <laughs> I think I win anyway by one point. This is 14? 
14 minus 1 is 13? Yeah, this should be a win. Okay. Victory. Yeah. Uh, they they messed up. <laughs> so, so, yeah. It, it, you know what? I'm leaving this in. Usually I cut out these weird wins. Or really lucky wins. Or misplayed wins, let's say. On my opponent's part. The reason I'm going to leave this in... I wanted to retreat. I was running out of board space. The game just did not feel good, but my opponent never snapped. And so this is why I always preach that when you are in an advantageous position, you should snap. Because I would have retreated. If my opponent snapped, I would have I would have left. So as long as the stakes are at one, you should stay in the game. And so I followed that advice. I stayed in the game. I would have pulled it out by the skin of my teeth thanks to my opponent. But the only reason my opponent got to misplay is because I stayed in the game. So that's why you should stay in when the stakes aren't raised. Okay, next up is Adrian the Fantastic. Board clogged, fantastic. No Squirrel Girl this game for us, but also that's fine. I mean, I, I have to play Mysterio. And then I'll get Sasquatch down middle. So I'll play Mysterio into the unknown. Yes, our board space is getting clogged in a hurry. But because we have Sasquatch in hand, and he's discounted to three, I can throw him into Sinister London? My board space is really going to get clogged. I'm still going to stick here and throw him into Dark Dimension. Interesting. So is this a Mr. Negative deck, maybe? I could Nico away something. I am out of board space. Or do I double up the White Widow? Or do I just sit and hold? I will be patient. Give them less time to react. Okay, long. So now is when I want to do White Widow. And I think it's okay if I... What cards do I have? I don't use a deck tracker. That's why I'm asking, even though you can see my deck. I have a Mockingbird. I have a Havoc. But I also don't have board space. So if I play White Widow here, she's going to get copied. I have two spots here. Hmm. I'll just play out the White Widow. Okay. Oh, perfect. So, this is a fantastic example of patience. So hopefully... Well, I guess White Widow going middle doesn't matter. Oh, yes it does. Fantastic. So there's that clog. And that's why we snapped. Because I didn't want to... What do I want to say here? So with me snapping directly after my killer play, the reason I didn't snap before is because I just was a little unsure. You could have said I, I maybe should have played it a little bit more aggressively because I played patiently once, I skipped a turn, instead of playing down White Widow to catch them off guard. So they were going super greedy, but I had no way of knowing that. I was running out of board space. So me snapping before I play the White Widow is super risky. The reason I snap immediately after is, I am still scared. Yes, I have enough points middle to win, I should, with a 10 power Sasquatch. And I should with Scar over here and the real Mysterio over here. But I don't want to maybe roll the die with some kind of god luck with a... Iron Heart and an Absorbing Man or something like that, or something weird that I'm not accounting for. So that's why I snap immediately afterwards. I don't want them to get any funny ideas that they can come back. And let me just get out of here with a single cube without risking me actually losing cubes. Okay, next up we have Cap... Washington, D.C. first location. Mockingbird is a good draw. We will hold on turn one. They have Red Hulk in their deck. They have their normal deck. 
Mindscape, I'm not a fan of. I think I keep Mindscape. Snap. And we snap. Play Mysterio into the unrevealed location. My next turn is, turn three is Sasquatch. Turn four is Mockingbird. Turn five is Scar. That is why I snapped. I very clearly see my winning line. They're gonna have to give me their Red Hulk. And so we have a very strong turn six play. <laughs> so I see exactly how the rest of my game is gonna go. The raft. I might just try to fill up the raft. Get Sasquatch down now. I mean, do they have Sean? This deck typically doesn't run Sean. Oh, nice. I can keep the lane one clear. Nico's destroy. Nico coming in handy. And then Wasp middle. And then on turn five, we're going to have a two cost scar. Hilarious. Okay, so there's their Sean. So they got that out of the way. Get the Scar down. Do I fulfill? I think I f I'm fine fulfilling, right? Because what am I giving them? I'm giving them nothing. So I'm just going to fulfill... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That should be more than enough power to win over there. No problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who cares? This is a this is an easy win. You can't play any of my cards anywhere. <laughs> it's still weird. Sure, you could play Destroyer and you could win, right? Oh no, you wouldn't even because of Mysteria. So yeah, it's just you just slam a Red Hulk and call it a day, and say you can't beat me. Because we're at 18? Yeah, there was no way. Victory. They used their Sean. Thankfully, because of Nico's destroy spell, we didn't have to fill with a big power card. So they couldn't Sean two of our targets. Fantastic. Uh, the, the destroyer was very unfortunate. But you can see, we still had enough power. I haven't been able to get a decent Havoc gameplay recorded yet. But this deck is able to win without Havoc. And that is a key part of any deck. Can you win without your featured card? Okay, next up we have Yuyu decks. Floating Vats. Okay, this might work out. Or we'll probably be... We're not playing a Destroy deck. We're playing Arishem. Okay. So I think I just get Goose everywhere. Central Park. Just clutter me up completely. But that is good for my Mockingbird. So we're definitely not playing you, Mysterio. We will play Goose and turn this into a low cost card game, which I am perfectly fine with because I have Mockingbird and Scar. So they can't double up whatever they wanted to there. And Goose here. Okay. And then next turn, we have a two cost Mockingbird. Okay, there is Blob. Yes, they wanted to double up the Blob. Okay. And then uh, Mockingbird. Will I still be able to draw? Yes. Mockingbird and... Yeah. Okay, try to, try to discount the cost of your cards. <laughs> Go ahead. There is Sasquatch. So another Jeff. Do I play? Where do I play Mockingbird? I can get to 21 middle. Uh, 21, actually 24 middle. If I get another Mockingbird, that does fulfill me left, but does that matter? Who knows? <laughs> okay, keep this out of your cards.
Okay, a free Mockingbird. I will take. And a Sasquatch. Fantastic. So we can legitimately play for every lane. With the thanks to Goose. They were unable to duplicate that blob that they wanted to. So get as much power middle. I can't play Sasquatch middle. Thank you, Goose. And I mean, I guess this is just it. Can you win all three? Yeah, there's no way they can win all three lanes. We're putting down on the last turn 31, 41. Am I doing that? Can you math, nerd? You're a nerd and you can't math. <laughs> 31 power. 31 power on the last turn. This was probably on the left with Goose and then another Goose. They were just kind of hoping Fastos would help them enough. And we were just simply able to overpower them. Okay, next up we have Cough. First location is Dark Dimension. We do have a early Havoc. What this deck is about, but the gameplay refuses, he refuses to cooperate while I'm recording. Am I patient again? What deck is this? I don't know. They haven't snapped on Muir Island. I'll be patient. Medusa, okay. Okay, so I get a Nico and Havoc. And Havoc will get up to 12, which means my Scar is discounted. I need to get down the Mockingbird, ideally. There is the Squirrel Girl. Get Squirrel Girl down. That means Mockingbird is down to 4. So I need 4 energy. So I will play Psylocke here. That way I can play Mockingbird middle. That actually is fine. <laughs> it would have been worse if the Killmonger would have gone on, gone off afterwards. Yes, yeah, so I can get the Mockingbird down now. The Scar will be two. So this is just going to be, where do I want to spread my power? I'm not confident enough to snap. I do have one power over left, which means they have to play left. And there, okay, they played left. And now our Scar is down to two. And yeah, we don't have any other one cost cards. I could be okay with the tie. This might be a Sean. But it almost definitely beats the Squirrel. So Havoc makes this go up to 19. They'd have to play a 12, 13 power card right. They probably abandoned there. So it is just a question of what did they play left. My gut is telling me to play left. Are ye worthy? Oh, was my gut right? Because I would have lost left. Let's see if this is the Sean. But they reveal first? I reveal first. Uh oh. Ooh, nice. Are ye worthy? Nice. Okay, so let me explain. My gut said to play left. If I tie middle, then it goes to tiebreaker. And I was currently tied middle. So ultimately, I had to risk the potential Sean because I need to be able to win either left or I need to have the most amount of points. Do I have the most amount of points? 28, 30, 39, and this is 30, 41. I actually do have the most amount of points. And if that was incorrect math, I'm sure I've corrected myself through an editor's note. But otherwise, that is why I played Scar left. I had to chance the Sean because if it was Sean over here, then maybe they still play another card here and we tie middle. And if it's a tie middle, then it goes into tiebreaker. And maybe I win just off of Kun Lun. So that's ultimately why my gut was telling me to go left. So that's the breakdown for this game. 
I've been recording for far too long just trying to get a Havoc, a game where Havoc actually mattered on turn three. He was hiding for the vast majority of while I was recording during testing. He was having a blast. <laughs> he was in my hand. I was playing him. It was fun. During recording, he decided to go to the bottom of my deck. So we finally get a Havoc game recorded. And you see how it works? You see I had, what, three energy? Three energy. Starting at turn three. Four, five, and six. And I still able to pull it out. Sure, it's not the most impressive win, but I, I can't be choosy while I'm recording. I have to take them how they come. But during testing, I'm telling you, uh, depending on your how you were playing, Psylocke is important and how you're drawing. Like you can really pop off in a way that the opponent has no clue of what they're, they should be expecting. And being able to hide your Havoc under Goose just really protects him a lot from Sean. And now you can spread out your power everywhere. You got to see that in my other games. Just the, the power output of this deck, even without Havoc. So I, I love this deck. It's a Havoc deck without hope. It's a Havoc deck without Mr. Negative. And it works. Okay, so here's the deck once again. As normal, I'd like to thank everybody who has be decided to become a member. There's not many of them, but I appreciate it. And thank you for watching to the end of the video. It's a big help to the channel and it helps me grow even bigger. Alliances are now in the game if you are watching this video when it has just been released. And I created my own alliance for my viewers because I have no friends. So if you would like to join, leave a comment on any of my videos telling me what your in-game name is. That way I know who to approve. And I look forward to welcoming you all into the Alliance. And now, a bonus clip. I'm pretty sure about me being a poor pilot, which I referenced at the beginning of the video. Okay, next up we have Bubba. Is this going to be our first game with Havoc? Wow. Go figure. He has been hiding in the deck. So I definitely play out Nico because then I can play out Mysterio. I will be able to draw into more cards and then we will see what I can do. I am so well positioned. Onslaught Citadel, that's probably where they're going to play their Iron Man. We have Sasquatch. Oh, this is just beautiful. So I will play Mysterio right. I'm going to give up middle. This Mysterio is going to turn into a 6 cost. Yeah, that might backfire and I might get an Ultron. We, we shall see. But my hand is just in fantastic position. I drew into Mockingbird. We are just going to be able to spread so much power. So we will actually be able to contest all three lanes. Oh, actually, I guess I... Oh, because it got destroyed. I did not know about that re interaction <laughs> it got destroyed so it didn't change okay that is uh, good to know very good to know i will get the sasquatch down here my scar will be discounted to two there is the angela kitty i will get Havoc down here and I think I do play well do I play white I don't play White Widow there do I play White Widow here next turn Sasquatch is gonna be free as well our scar is gonna be free because I'm going to play Mockingbird so get Havoc and White Widow down there this might be an Iron Man right. We'll see. They haven't played in the Black Vortex yet, which is a little funny. Uh, let's see. I mean, I guess I, I just do this. Mockingbird. Uh, yeah, this is fine. 
Okay, that went where I wanted it to. And do they have Sean? What do you think? Do you have Sean? Oh man, Goose came too late. This is why Goose is fantastic as well. They wouldn't have been able to play their vision. Uh, but, oh well. So this is just a do you have Sean? And where do we want the Scar to go? I think I want Scar to go middle. So I will just do this. This deck runs Juggernaut. This deck runs... I haven't seen it run Vision, though. Uh, this deck runs Iron Man. So we will see. They do have extra energy. Do they have extra energy? I don't think they do this turn. We drew into our hand, our deck perfectly. They'd never played into Black Vortex. Let's see. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Juggernaut's not going to be able to move anybody. That's why I filled up. Uh-oh, is this enough? Oh, just enough. Oh. Man, if the real Mysterio was anywhere else. What a heartbreaking loss, man. Uh, yeah, we just needed to play the Mysterio. And also, me missing out on the Black Vortex, I did not properly think that through. So this was a very, very, very winnable game. And I didn't just didn't account for it. If I had, I would have played Nico left. That was the play. To have her turn into the six cost card. And then play the Mysterio. I still could have played the Mysterio right. Because the Mysterio left would have been destroyed. As it was. So I lost this game based on a an interaction that I wasn't used to. That in hindsight makes sense. But that's ultimately why I lost here. I lost out on my six cost card. Get right. So yeah, we leave. Escaped. That's that's weird. <laughs> Nobody snapped. <laughs>